Hello there and thanks for joining me. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video I'll share a beginner's tutorial that'll show you how to paint Kirby using Medibang free art software. I'll go to the Illustrate preset and I'll set my canvas to 10 inches wide by 8 inches tall at 300 dpi. That'll create a new canvas. First let's start by drawing Kirby's body or head. So we'll select the shape tool and then we'll select the ellipse mode which will let us draw a circle. I'll select black for my color and I'll set my brush or my line width size. Now I think that's a bit too thin so I'm going to try some different line widths until I find something that I like. I think I want it to be a bit thicker. Maybe something like this will work. And then I'll go ahead and select my move tool and I'll just reposition it so it's more centered on my canvas. Now this circle appears on a layer and you could have multiple layers of objects or layers of paint stacked on top of each other when you're working digitally. So we're gonna to wanna to take advantage of that. I'm gonna double click on that layer one and I'm gonna name it body. That way we know it's the line for the body. We're gonna have different lines for the eyes and for the mouth and so on. So let's go ahead and create a new layer by clicking on the new layer icon. We'll double click on that and let's call this a guides. These will be some guides that'll help us draw this more symmetrically and more evenly and in proportion. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the brush tool so that I can just freehand draw. And the brush that I wanna select is the pen. In order to draw a straight line, I'll tap once on the left side of the circle and then hold down shift and drag my pen over to the right side and tap once more to create my straight line. What I wanna do is I wanna divide my circle here in half horizontally and vertically. So it looks kinda of like a pizza with four slices. Now I'll create another new layer for an additional set of guides. I'll call this Guides 2. Let's select the Shape tool and the Rectangle shape. And I'm just gonna draw a rectangle surrounding my circle here. This is gonna help me define where the top of the head, the arms, and the feet are. I'm gonna go to Select Transform, and I'm going to drag on these top and bottom edges just to kind of reshape my square here to get it to fit however I like. Now if I make it wider, that'll help me define how wide or how long the arms are. If I move the bottom guide, that'll help me determine how long the feet are or how far they go down and how big they are in proportion to the body. And you want this to be pretty well centered. I'm going to go ahead and click the OK button down at the bottom to apply that transformation. And then I will reduce the opacity of those guides on both of those guide layers just so they're a little more faint. Now I want to draw a few more guides. I'm going to select the brush tool and the pen. Then I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to divide the two bottom quarters of that pizza shape there as well as the two top corners. This will help me place the top of the eyes and the bottom of the arms. I'm going to go back to the body layer now. I'm going to create a new layer above that, and I'm going to name that layer Eye Left. This will be the left eye. I'm going to draw the eye by selecting the Shape tool, selecting the Ellipse Drawing Mode, and then I'm simply going to just drag an oval shape from the first horizontal line to the second horizontal line, and you can decide how wide you want this to be. Next, you can select the Move tool and you can reposition that eye wherever you like. Now, the eye doesn't have to be perfect because we can adjust it later and it doesn't have to exactly match the guides. I'm gonna go ahead and select that eye left layer. Then I'm gonna click on the Duplicate Layer button to make a duplicate of that eye and I'll call it Eye Right. Now, with the Move tool still selected, I'll hold Shift and I'll drag over to the right and that'll keep that eye from moving up or down. I just want to think about the distance between the two eyes and then I'll worry about centering them. So you may need to move the left eye as well to get it where you want it. Next, I'll create a new layer and I'll call it Mouth. I'll select the brush tool and then the pen preset. I'll choose a brush width and I'll add some correction which will smooth out the line. I'm going to choose about 20. And I'll just draw in my smile. And if you need to use undos until you get the exact perfect smile that you want, feel free to do that because that's the beauty of working digitally. You don't have to get it right the first time. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's draw in the line for our arms. We'll start with the left arm. I'll create a new layer for that and I'll call it arm left. And we'll just draw in our arm using the brush tool with the pen. Now it may take a few tries just like with the mouth. The smoothing will help you to smooth out your line but it helps if you try to draw with a really quick fluid stroke if you want clean ink lines like this. We'll create a new layer for the opposite side and we'll use that to draw on the arm over there as well. This arm is gonna be pointed up and again, we can use those guides that we drew earlier to help us know where the arm attaches to the body. Now we can go ahead and draw on the lines for the legs the same way. I'll call this leg left 
and we'll draw on our foot starting from underneath the arm going towards the corner of that square and then up towards that center vertical guide while leaving a little bit of space between the legs. Now feel free to undo as much as you need and redraw it until you get it right. If you need to select your eraser and clean up anything that you overpainted, feel free to do that as well. Let's go ahead and create a new layer for the leg on the other side. We'll call this leg right. And we'll draw that the same way. And since we have this square surrounding our Kirby here, then we can see where to draw. We just use that same motion going from under the arm to the corner of the square and then back up to that vertical guide in the center, leaving a little bit of space between the legs. If it helps to draw it from a different direction, try that. You can see that it's taking me a few tries and I'm not gonna get it perfect every time. It's up to you if you wanted to sketch this in first and then draw clean lines over it, if that makes it easier. But I just wanted to show you how you can do it just freehand drawing it. Now you may find that you look at this and you think, well, the proportions are not correct. The feet are way too big. I don't want the feet to be so big. What do I do? Well, unfortunately, you will have to adjust things a bit, but this is nice because again, this is the great thing about working digitally. You can make these changes very easily to make your artwork as good as possible. So if you see a mistake, it's not too late. You don't have to start over from the beginning. You can just fix a couple of things. So I transformed my guides using the select menu and just made them a little bit shorter. And then I'm going to go to my leg layers and I'm just going to clear what's on those layers. And I'm going to redraw those feet in a new proportion. So that area for my feet that I'm reserving is a bit smaller. I'll just draw that same motion. And essentially, that's going to make my feet smaller. Now, I could have transformed my feet or the lines that I drew for the feet, but the problem is if I do that, then it's going to make the lines a bit thinner and a bit squashed, and it won't match the nice clean lines on everything else. So now I've fixed the proportion of the feet. The feet are smaller in relation to the body, and I feel like that works better. This is why we've been creating all of these layers for each part so that we can just adjust a small part of the image rather than having to start over and fix things that weren't broken to begin with. Now, if you're done with the guide layers, you can just hide them so that we're not seeing them anymore. And then we can start working on adding some color. We'll add the color on separate layers as well. But in order to do that, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and organize some of our layers first. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a folder, which will let me combine layers into a folder. And I'm gonna drag all of those layers I created into that folder. That folder is going to be all of my lines, and then that way I can have my lines separate from my color. It also tidies up your layers palette because you're going to end up having a lot of layers here. I'm also going to change the order of the layers. I'm going to move the eye layers next to each other so the eye left is next to the eye right. It's important to name your layers and keep them nice and organized, otherwise it makes it very difficult to work with layers. I'm going to double click next to the folder and I'm going to name that folder or that group of layers lines. And I'll create a new layer. And I want to make sure that I drag it out of that folder. So drag it till it moves out of the folder. You can click on the folder icon to collapse or close the folder. And then on that bottom layer, I'll just call it body. This will be the color for the body. We want to create a folder above that. Let's call that folder color and we'll drag the body layer into the color folder. So now our lines are in one folder and our color is in another folder or group. I'm going to select a pinkish color like this. I'll select the paint bucket. I'll make sure reference is set to canvas and expand is set to three pixels. And then if I click, I can fill in that body. I can go ahead and create a new layer for the arms and I can fill in the arms. And what this is doing is this is keeping the paint within those lines, but putting it on a separate layer. I'll go ahead and create a new layer for feet. This will be the color for the feet. We'll pick a magenta color like this and we'll go ahead and just fill the feet. Next, we'll create another new layer and we'll call this iris. This will be for the color in the eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and select a blue color like this, and I'll go ahead and just fill those eyes with blue. We'll add the pupils or the dark part of the eye on a separate layer, so we'll create a new layer for that and we'll call that pupils. We'll select the shape tool and the ellipse mode. I'll select black for my color. And I'll go ahead and just draw an ellipse that fits within the other ellipse. And I'll select the move tool and I'll reposition it to where it fits. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that pupils layer. I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna drag it over so that I have a duplicate. And I'll make sure that's centered on the other eye as well. Now we can go ahead and select the paint bucket and we can fill those with black. And now we have our pupils. Now these pupils don't need to be on separate layers anymore. So to conserve layers and tidy things up, we can go ahead and just merge those two pupil layers into a single layer. And now they're combined. 
We'll create a new layer above that, and we'll call that highlights. These will be the highlights on the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and select the brush tool. I'll select a white, then I'll use the right bracket key to make my brush larger, and I'll use maximum pressure with my pen to let the shape of the brush or the maximum size of the brush make that circle shape naturally. If you prefer, you could draw this with the shape tool just like we did with the eyes and the pupils. You can also have the highlights layer move above the line layers, and then you'd get a different kind of effect where the highlights cover up your lines. Now let's add the blush to Kirby's cheeks. We'll create a new layer, and we'll call this blush. I'm going to select a pink color that's darker than our base color for the skin. We could draw this in with the pen if we want to, or we can use a shape tool. I think I'll use the shape tool with the ellipse mode, and I'll go ahead and just draw in an oval for my blush here. I'll select the paint bucket, and I'll fill it. Then I'll go ahead and use the Move tool to position it where I want it to be on the cheek. And I can go ahead and just duplicate that blush layer, hold Shift and drag it over to the other side. And there you go, we have our blush. Now in order to help Kirby look more three-dimensional, we want to add some form or some shading. So to do that, I'm going to go to the Feet layer first. And I'm going to turn on Protect Alpha. That's going to keep me from painting outside of the feet shapes that I've already painted. I'm going to select the Brush tool. I'll use that same pen preset. I'll hold Alt to sample my foot color, and I'll make it a bit darker. And I'm going to just draw a line to just kind of separate the shadow area from the rest of the color there. So this would be the outer edge of the shadow. And you want to make sure that you draw that line pretty smooth and pretty clean. Then I'll select the paint bucket, and I'll just fill in that shadow side. And now we have a nice shadow for the feet, and they look kind of rounded and contoured. Now if I want to clean up or adjust that edge, I can select the brush tool, sample my original foot color that's not the shadow color, and then just paint back in some mid-tone or some non-shadow color. And you can see I can clean it up. If I use a bigger brush, I'll get kind of a smoother edge. Now let's add a highlight to the feet. I'm going to go ahead and select a lighter color now that's a bit lighter than my base color for my feet. And I'll just use the brush tool with the pen just to draw in some little ovals here on the end of the feet. That makes them look shiny. And then next we'll add some shading to the arms. I'll go ahead and turn on Protect Alpha. And then I'll sample the color from the blush there, and we'll use that for the shadow color on our arms and skin. And I'll just go ahead and fill that in the same way. If the light's coming from the top, as we've determined with the highlights on the eyes, then all the shadows are going to be on the underside of our forms here. Now to shade our body, we need to adjust our lines a bit. So we'll go into that lines folder by clicking on it to open it. We'll go to the body lines. We'll select the eraser. What we want to do is we want to kind of shave off a bit of the center part of the line here. We want it to taper off to a nice sharp point. So I'm just kind of erasing it so that it has a nice sharp point and then erasing everything that's left over that I don't want. And we get an effect like that where the body looks like it's connected to the arms and that they're the same form but the arms are just kind of sticking out of the body. And this has left us with some gaps that we'll need to fill in. We'll go to the color group and the body layer. And that's the layer that we want to add paint to. So we'll select the paint bucket and we'll just fill those white areas with that pink color from the body. Now it looks like the arms are connected to the body. Now on that body layer, we can go ahead and turn on protect alpha and we can add some shading just like we did with the arms using the brush tool with the pen. I'm going to use the left bracket key to make my brush a bit smaller. And then I'm going to use that same pink color from the blush just to paint right along the edge here, just to do that edge where the arm meets the body first to get that nice and clean and then coming to a sharp point. Then we'll have it kind of follow the bottom edge of Kirby, get a bit wider at the bottom, and then taper off at a point on the other side where it meets the arm. Now you only need to worry about making the outer edge nice and smooth and getting those points to look nice. You can fill in the rest using the paint bucket, like so. I'll go back to the brush tool and I'll clean things up a bit. I'll also sample some of that original lighter pink color from Kirby and I'll use that to clean up the edge coming from the opposite side now. And again, if I need to use undos just to make sure it's absolutely perfect, I'm gonna do that. If I use a bigger brush, that's going to help me get nice smooth curves like this. And now the body has some three-dimensional form. Let's go ahead and clean up the arms a little bit more. I'll go back to the arms layer, and I just want to maybe cut that shadow back just a bit more so it's a bit thinner. Maybe same thing on the other side, just to kind of flatten it out a bit. I think that looks a lot better now. 
So at this point, I'm almost done drawing Kirby. I have a few more things I need to do to clean this up and get it looking like a final version. I'm going to go ahead and just close those folders and delete those guide layers. And I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to drag the folders of the lines and colors into that folder. I want to make sure I don't accidentally put a color in the lines or the lines in the color. I want the lines and the color to be separate, but be within a single folder that is called Kirby. That way I can select that folder and then select the move tool and I can move Kirby as a whole, all the layers, all of the color, all the lines together. Now this stuff is sort of optional. I'm gonna to go to select transform and I'm going to make Kirby smaller because he doesn't quite fit on my screen here. I'll just center him by dragging him into place. I'll go ahead and click on OK to apply that transformation. Then I'll go to Select Transform, and I'll make sure that Free Transform and Perspective are checked. I'll drag from the top corner here and just expand those two top corners out to create kind of a trapezoid effect. What that's going to do is that's going to make the top of Kirby look a bit wider, and so he's not a perfect circle anymore. He kind of has some mass, like he's a little balloon character. You could even shift that center point on the bottom left or right if you wanted him to be kind of leaning left or right. You could squish him and squash him and make him taller, really whatever you want. And you can apply these transformations to your individual layers for your eyes and things like that as well too. So that gives you some options for how you can transform Kirby to make him a little more unique. So to give you an idea of what else you can do to transform this, you can go to the lines layers. And right now we have the eye lines separate from the eye color, but we want to go ahead and do something about that. We want to create a folder that's called eyes. We want to move the layers for the eye lines into that folder by dragging them. And we want to go into the color folder and we want to drag the eye color layers into that folder. And we want those color layers to be beneath the eye layers. Just make sure they go into the folder and make sure that they're stacked in the same order that they were before. The eye lines are on top of the highlights which are on top of the pupils, which are on top of the iris. Let's click on the eyes folder to close the eyes group so we don't see it anymore. And we'll just have that group selected and we can use the move tool and hold shift just to move the eyes up if we want. Now you notice that's going to expose some of the white space underneath. That happened because we filled that area with the paint bucket and the paint bucket didn't bother filling in behind the eyes. So what we need to do is we need to just go ahead and move all of our layers first that we want to move. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the body layer now, and I'm going to make sure that I turn off Protect Alpha, otherwise I won't be able to fill in those white areas. And then I'll use the brush tool to fill in with that pink color. Now Protect Alpha is protecting me from painting over any transparent areas, that's why I wasn't able to paint. When I turned it off, then I could fill it in. So I made an adjustment to my eyes, I think that looks better. I'll go to my mouth layer, I'll go to Select, and I'll transform that. Maybe we'll squish it down and we'll make it a bit thinner and less tall. I'll go ahead and commit to that transformation. I'll use the move tool to move it up, move it a bit closer to the eyes. And I think with that, I have a finished drawing of Kirby. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to File, Save As. I'm gonna save the original with all of the layers as a Medibang file. And then I'll go ahead and save a copy by going to Save As again. And this time I will choose PNG. That way I have a version with all of my layers and then I have another version that's flat. And I'll make sure to save it with a transparent background that way I can take this Kirby and I can use it on just about anything. I can post it on the web, I can print it, I can use it in a video like I'm doing here. If you enjoyed this digital art tutorial of how to draw Kirby, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more tutorials for digital artists like you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.